All of our videos here are brought to you by the Landscape Certified Contractors Association. Due with the membership support, we're able to bring these videos to you each and every week. If you'd like to be part of our organization and help us bring these videos to you, make sure you visit www.irrigatortech.com and have a great day. Years ago, but they found they had 28,500 chainsaw injuries in 1999, okay? And 36% were injuries to the legs and to the knees. So, you know, over a third that way. And um, the average chainsaw injury requires 110 stitches and the average medical cost, this is 1999, so it's probably triple since then, is $5,600. So it's very exp expensive. And it does not only cut, it rips you apart. So if you guys ever wanna go into Google and type in chainsaw accidents and be gored out, it's uh, <laughs> interesting, yeah. So, and the videos are even more so. Um, to kind of go off some of the features they were talking about here on the chainsaws, you have up here, you've got a hand guard here, okay? That prevents your hand from slipping, and um, also if any um, branches comes to break, it also protects your hand. When you're holding a chainsaw, always hold the chainsaw with your fingers and your thumb wrapped around the handles here, okay? Never operate a chainsaw with one hand. Now we have top-handed chainsaws, and I know people think this is for one-handed use, but it's not recommended for one-handed use. You always should have two hands holding a chainsaw. The reason is, is the reactive forces. These chain speeds are going up to 67 miles per hour. So the reactive forces, if they come in contact, it's harder if you only have one hand. That's why I always recommend two hands. The thing with the hand guard, if it's missing, make sure it gets replaced. The other thing that chainsaws have is chain breaks, okay? A chain break is activated when um, the, there's a kickback occurs. It's inertia driven, so if your hand is not on it, it'll actually, the chain will actually activate. That stops the chain from moving can't move the, the chain at all. And so, um, and the inertia, it just, if it throws back. And when you're holding a chainsaw, you never want to hold it in front of you, okay? You want it to the side and you want it close. You never want to extend yourself. And the reason is you want to have control over the chainsaw. So if it does kick back, you can stop and it's away from you. Now we got people all the time like, oh, I'm left-handed, I want you, can you, why can't you guys make a left-handed chainsaw? Well, this is the reason why. If you're holding it like this and it kicks back, well, where's that gonna go? So. You always want to make sure it's securely from there and the chain brake's working. And how you can test the chain brake is once you get it going, hit the chain brake, make sure the chain stops instantly. If the chain does not stop, you need to stop using it and actually take it in for repair. So it's very important. So make sure that's all activated and working. The other thing is when it's sitting at idle and if the chain is actually going around and it's at idle, it's not supposed to be moving, that means probably the clutch springs are worn out and that needs to be replaced. So you need to just check those. It's very important as it's starting. As the other features they talked about here is they have a side chain adjuster or sometimes on chainsaws they have a front chain adjuster. And how, what's important on chains is you wanna make sure it's adjusted properly. Because if it's too loose, it'll come off. And if it's too tight, you're actually putting too much stress on the clutch and the crankshaft and you could actually break that over time. And um, so what we recommend is when you actually put the chain on there, you have a scrunch here, okay? So you take the scrunch with the bar nut, the right one. Make sure the chain brake is off, and then all you do is you loosen up the bar nuts here. And then how you want the chain, if you see how it's loose right now, when you tighten it up, it'll actually grab more tension. So you want to freely move the chain on there. Okay, and you want to be able to have so where it has no slack at the bottom, right? But you can still freely move it, and when you pinch it up, you'll see you know three or four cutters. So and the other thing is, is when you actually do cutting, you're going to lift up on the bar. So it's recommended when you're tightening it up, you lift that on the back of the bar, or you actually take the tip of the bar and you lift it up. Because if you don't do that as you're cutting, it'll actually move the bar up, and you'll actually have slack in the chain there. So it's very important that you do that. The other thing is when you're working with the chainsaw, always have gloves. It's very important. They have a whole bunch of different gloves out, you know, one that covers up your hands, just anything that's going to be a good work glove because you want to protect your fingers. So actually still uh, a while back, um, there was this guy who actually tried to sue still, and he was taking a scabbard and putting it on there, and he couldn't get it on the right direction, so he slipped and he cut his finger, okay? So he ended up suing us saying, you know, the for whatever reason. 
anyway, he didn't win, but his wife also countersued us too because you know she uh, he couldn't help her out anymore. So uh, <laughs> enough said there. But the thing is, it's very important, and it's so easy that people you know uh, they always need to be wearing proper protective gloves. So it's very very important that way. So. Anyway, so all you do is freely on there, and then what you're going to do from there is, is just depending on the tension on there, uh, remember it's going to tighten up, just lift up on it, and then you're going to do the bar nuts. So you don't want to overly tighten them, but it needs to be nice and snug in there, okay? After you're done with the chain, you actually, using a chainsaw, you actually should loosen up the chain so you have slack in the chain. And the reason why I say that is, is because over time, when it actually, the heat, the metal cooled down, it will contract, okay? And um, if it's already tied on there, what is it, it is going to put actually more stress on the, the, the bearings inside and your crankshaft, and they'll actually, I've seen them more, they've actually broken before off of there. So after you're done, make sure the chain's loose and then you have tension from there. Um, a couple other features on the chainsaw is you actually have bumper spikes here. And what those do is, is when you're actually doing bucking cutting, so you're just going to do regular cuts, you actually, it gives you leverage, you actually put the spikes into the wood and it helps um, secure the chainsaw so it doesn't move around. And actually when you go into the uh, cup, we'll talk about it later, you want to go into full power so that it prevents some of the reactive forces going back from there. Um, the other thing is the recoil system is on here. You want to make sure um, every so often you actually take off the cover, clean it out underneath. Especially if you guys are using palm trees, if you're cutting those, all the palm fronds they get inside, that acts as like a little oven inside because air, these are air-cooled engines. If air cannot get into the cooling fins, your engine temperature will rise and you'll fry this off. So it's very important, especially if you're working palms, uh, with palm trees, every time you're done, you actually need to take it apart, especially this cover, and clean all the palm fronds outside of it. Uh, the air filter, which is also important too, they talked about that in there. Some chainsaws um, have easy access to the, to the air filter. Some other ones you actually have to take apart. All the steel air filters, they use a kind of a, a, a mesh, a, not a mesh, a block material, or they use kind of a, an automotive type air filter. And you should check your air filters often. For cleaning. And how you do the steel air filters to clean them is you actually get warm, soapy water put them in that and then you rinse them out from there and then you let them dry out. The other thing is, is you always want to make sure the choke is on when you actually take the air filter off. And the reason is, is if the choke uh, is not on there, some dirt could get into the carburetor and down into the engine. And dirt's what destroys these engines. The engines actually run about anywhere from 10 to 16,000 RPM. So they're going quite fast. So air filter right here, as you can see, which is there, all you do is you, if there's any, um, Big particles, you brush it off, and then warm soapy water, rinse it out, and then you go from there. If there's any other dirt or debris, clean it out. The other thing is, you have your spark plug, you wanna make sure you change that at least once a year. If it's more often, you should check your um, instruction manual. The other thing inside is you wanna make sure you clean out everywhere from there, and um, that's pretty much it. And when you put it back, just make sure you get the nice, good seal on it. Because if it doesn't go on tight from there, you don't wanna over tighten it, but if it's not snug, you're gonna have dirt inside the engine. Um, and then on the cooling fins here, remember to keep those uh, clean. You want to blow those out, which is very important. You want to keep them clean. And then the other thing is you want to make sure that, that your throttle lock is working for your chainsaw. So they have an interlock that will not let you activate the chainsaw for safety-wise. So make sure all those parts are working. If something does not work, you want to make sure that you take it in and get it repaired from there. And then the last thing to talk to you about on the features is they talked about the anti-vibe system. And anti-vibe systems are really good because what it does is it reduces the vibration in your, in going to your hands and to your arms. And you guys have probably heard of like white knuckle or carpal tunnel, right? That happens from using continuous use of, of the same thing. And chainsaws produce a lot of vibration. Still goes out of the way to help reduce the vibration. We do it through the saw chain, through the springs and buffers. And so when you're actually using it, you can notice when I push it down that actually there's some little bit of tension that goes with it there. They've actually used these buffers and springs throughout the whole system. If these springs and buffers, if you push it down and there's a lot of play in there, that needs to be replaced. It's not a very safe to use. The reason is, is when you're in a cut and if it's not, uh, if, not um, if it's got a lot of plate, 
the reactive forces it uh, could jump back on you on, on kickback and you have less control of it. So it's very important to inspect all those before you use a chainsaw. Just make sure it's in good working order. If it's not, do not use the chainsaw. So those are the features of the chainsaw. We're gonna to go to the next uh, section, which is maintenance.